Hi, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic Blender conference so far. Um, this is my fourth time attending BCon, and I feel very privileged to be able to be up here uh, speaking to you today and to show you the work that we've been doing. Um, my name is Mike Hodgetts, and I have been using Blender for over 20 years. I'd like to think I've improved somewhat in that time. Um, as a freelancer, I'm a senior generalist and um, technical artist, and um, I've been really fortunate enough to work with some amazing clients, uh, working with musicians such as Jacob Collier, Sabrina Carpenter. Um, I've done uh, marketing and promotional material for Amazon TV shows such as The Boys and Gen V, and I also do uh, architectural visualization work on the side as well. In my current role, I am the co-founder and head of CG for Simplates.com. That's my business partner, Alex Pierce, there on the left. Uh, Simplates is a content library of fully CG background driving plates that are specifically designed for virtual production car process. And this is just a selection of the plates that we have available on our library at the moment. Now, before I really dive into this, um, I firstly want to take a moment to explain what I mean by virtual production car process for those who may not be aware. Uh, so put simply, virtual production is a method of capturing in-camera VFX by shooting on an LED stage. The most well-known example of this is probably ILM's The Volume, on which The Mandalorian was shot. So basically, instead of shooting against a green screen and adding the VFX in post, virtual production allows you to capture the final product directly there in camera um, by streaming content onto an LED wall. That can either be done in real time using something like Unreal Engine, or uh, can be used pre-recorded content, which are known as plates. And one of the most regular use cases for this is car process. So this is a clip from a recent car commercial for the Hyundai Mobis. Now, if you wanted to shoot a scene like this, uh, it would be so expensive to shut down a highway, to rent a full film crew, and to shoot this practically on location. Instead, it's much more efficient and cost-effective to place a car and your actors on an LED stage and to stream a background plate of a car driving down a road. So basically, virtual production car process is the fancy grown-up version of this kind of filmmaking, old-school rear projection, uh, which will be familiar to anybody who, like I did, grew up watching old James Bond movies, like Sean Connery here from Doctor No. Now, when you're sourcing uh, content for car process, filmmakers and producers can either shoot it themselves, they can hire a film crew and strap a camera to a car and go and shoot it, or more likely, they're going to use an existing content library, uh, such as Plate Pros, DrivingPlates.com, Inglecart, Video Plates and Backings, just to name a few. So, what is Simplates? Where do we fit into this? Well, you've actually already seen our work. That clip that I just showed you for the Hyundai Mobis, this was entirely shot using Simplates. That whole background that you see through the windows, all the trees, the highway, the traffic, everything is entirely CG and was all made using Blender, as you can see here from the uh, screenshot from the actual project file. So why are we doing this? Why are we creating digital driving plates? Well, traditionally captured plates have a number of limitations and problems that can cause headaches for filmmakers. The big four that we're trying to solve is stitching, stability, consistency, and customization. So firstly, stitching. When you're capturing a, a traditional driving plate, you can either use a fisheye 360 lens or you can use a multi-camera array. Now, there's pros and cons to both of these here. Um, with fisheye, you're going to get seamless 360 footage, but often at the cost of lower quality. With a multi-camera array, you're going to get much higher quality footage, but you're going to have stitching and seam lines. Uh, so as an example, 
Uh, this is a video, this is one of the plates from drivingplates.com for Amsterdam, given that we're here, thought I might as well use a local example. Um, but you can see that there's issues here. If we focus on these two panels um, and look at these, you can see that where the white and orange parts of the van um, transition, that is, there's a clear kind of line there, and these are not going to stitch together seamlessly. There is software that you can use that's going to kind of make this easier, but it's going to be incredibly difficult to make this seamless. Another example here from Plate Pros, um, if we look at the wheel arch at the back wheel, you can see there's, again, there's a seam there. There's a kind of a duplication of the wheel. And as I play this clip, that seam is going to remain. And this causes problems because it means that a director might not be able to shoot at the angle that they want or to point the uh, the camera in a specific direction because those stitching lines are going to be visible in camera. At Simplate, we render in true panoramic 360, which then wraps around to create a perfectly seamless environment. So essentially, every frame of our plates is a HDRI. So you can shoot on these in any direction. You can point the camera wherever you want, and you are never going to see a seam or a stitching artifact. We also render in extremely high quality. Uh, so this city plate here was rendered in 8K resolution, but we actually deliver by standard uh, 12K, and we've rendered in 16, and we've even gone as high as a staggering 24K resolution, which is pretty insane and puts you know, quite a lot of uh, stress on some of our render farms. Secondly, cuts and continuity. So by necessity, filmmakers are constrained by the length of the plates that they're using, and most driving plates are around about two minutes. And when that footage gets to the end, it's going to cut back to the beginning, and especially if that happens during the middle of an actor's performance, it's going to completely ruin the take. It also means that editors have to cut around certain shots to ensure that those hard cuts are not in frame. So this clip that's playing is from the TV show Moonflower Murders, produced by the BBC. We've got our main characters here driving down a nice English country lane. And if we look in the background, where did that fence come from? That fence was not there a second ago. And no, don't worry, the fence is gone. The fence is gone. It's all good. Don't worry. And we're going to cut back in a second, and the fence is back. And the fence is gone again. <laughs> Now, I'm not trying to you know, be disrespectful to this particular show um, or the people that worked on it. It just highlights some of the problems that using traditional plates can cause. At Simplates, we've overcome this by making all of our plates completely loop. They are, i.e., the last frame is the exact same as the first. So this is our uh, Country Roads plate played back in Assimilate Live Effects. It's a media server that's specifically designed for streaming, coloring, and compositing for virtual production. And as we come to the end of our timeline here, we're going to loop back to the start. No cut perfectly seamless, and it loops every single time. Another example, this is one of our city plates. And again, as we come towards the end, the entire thing, all of the buildings, all of the traffic, even the pedestrians on the roads, everything is going to seamlessly loop together, which means that you can shoot on our plates all day long, and you will never, ever see a cut point. Thirdly, stability. So this is a clip from the TV show Inside Man, um, produced by Netflix. Now, don't look at the actors, but look at the footage behind the, the, the windows. It is bouncing everywhere. <laughs> and this can be super distracting. And once you start to notice this, uh, you'll start seeing it everywhere, and you can't really unsee it. And there's a reason, perhaps there's a reason that you know, this is so bouncy. Maybe the, the road surface was really uneven. Um, maybe the, the actual rig that was securing the, the camera to the car was a bit loose. For whatever reason, it ended up being really unstable. Now, there's, again, there is software out there and things that you can do to mitigate this and to stabilize the footage. But that often costs time and money, which is usually not allocated in the budget. Uh, to a lesser extent, this is one from Reacher on Amazon Prime. Again, look at the background through the, the driver window. It's really jittery and kind of bouncing around. By producing all of our content digitally, 
we can ensure that the camera is perfectly smooth every single time. And again, this is not meant as a criticism of those shows. It just kind of highlights the issues that plague this niche corner of our industry, um, even on big budget, high-end productions. Fourthly, customization. Um, or really, I should say, lack thereof. Um, so let's say you really like this plate from Plate Pros. But suddenly, the script has now changed, and actually, this shot now needs to be at sunset or sunrise. Maybe you need to have a lot more tra uh, traffic on the road. Maybe your production is actually set in the 1960s, and so all of the vehicles need to be period-specific. Well, that's going to be extremely hard to do with captured plates. You'd essentially have to rehire the company to go back out and reshoot the, the plate to be specific to your needs. Our plates are entirely customizable. So we actually render all of our plates for the library um, in a minimum of four different lighting conditions as standard. We also produce all of our plates procedurally, uh, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Uh, but what this also means is that we can provide plates that would be almost impossible or at least extremely expensive to create and capture traditionally. You know, making a sci-fi or a cyberpunk environment such as these, uh, you know, this would need to be a complete VFX shot, or you know, you'd have to build an actual set. With our CG pipeline, the sky is the limit, literally. Um, we're currently working on aerial or sky plates that can be used for things like helicopter shots or shooting out of aeroplane windows. The cost of making these ones practically, well, that's like, what, millions and millions of dollars. So why Blender? You know, we're all here at Blender Conference. We can be potentially forgiven for thinking that Blender is automatically the best software. It's going to be the be-all and end-all, and we should automatically be using it in every situation. But we, of course, did test a number of different pipelines before we landed on our current one. So we identified that our pipeline needed to deliver three key things. Uh, we needed to be able to render 360 panoramas in extremely high quality. We needed it to, to be highly customizable, so we needed a procedural um, pipeline. And of course, they needed to be photorealistic. We started with Unreal Engine. It's a natural choice for a virtual production workflow. Nope. Unreal fell at the very first hurdle. Um, if any of you have ever tried to do 360 rendering in Unreal, you will know the pain that we faced with this. Um, and although it has gotten better recently, you know, there's uh, new updates and updates to different plugins, um, they are still quite hacky. And so the lack of proper panoramic rendering, coupled with the fact that there's no real AOVs or render passes, and there's no distributed offline rendering for Unreal, meant that it was going to be unsuitable for our pipelines. What about proceduralism? Well, Houdini is obviously the king when it comes to a procedural workflow. But Houdini has one really big, massive drawback. It's super expensive, um, which very naturally led us back to Blender and geometry nodes. Now, I love geometry nodes. I think the creative possibilities that they open to us as technical artists is absolutely immense. And I do want to say a big thank you to the developers who are constantly pushing the boundaries of what we're able to achieve with them with every new release. And I am so super excited for 5.0. Um, with geometry nodes, we've created a number of kind of building blocks or templates that we can easily create anything that we might need. Some of these are really simple, such as this little uh, utility node group for recalculating normals based on a menu input. Others are far more complex. Um, and this is our roads generator. Uh, I should as well point out, this is probably the most simple of our generators that I've built over the last 18 months. Um, it was just the only one that I could actually get all of the nodes onto a single screenshot. Um, so we start by generating a curve that's based on the desired duration and speed of the plate. And onto that, we can generate a road. 
uh, using the road generator that I just showed, um, and where everything is entirely procedural and customizable. Everything from you know, the number of lanes, the style and color of the lane markings, uh, medians and embankments, or the materials. It means that this allows us to create a wide variety of different road styles onto which we can add traffic. Again, all of which is extremely customizable. From the density of that traffic, the various seed values, um, to the different positions, different types of vehicles, different car colors, etc., we're able to change these really, really quickly to cater to exactly what our clients might need. We also have a road generator specific for cities which again, we can control loads of different parameters, the number of lanes, options for medians in between each of the roads, um, the lane markings, road markings like crosswalks and turning arrows. Um, we can also completely dynamically set and randomize the sizes of the actual city blocks themselves and the actual buildings. Talking of buildings, onto those, we can add our buildings generator, uh, which is, again, entirely procedural and completely parametric. Uh, there's far too many options in this for me to, to list them all, uh, but we can obviously control the, the heights of those buildings, the, uh, the tapering on the tops of them, the, uh, the different lights behind each of the windows, um, as well as all the materials, just to name but a few. From entire cities to smaller elements like power lines, flocks of birds, or even pedestrians, um, the power of a procedural workflow with geometry nodes means that all of this is extremely easy for us to customize, to change, and to edit to exactly what our clients are going to want. For rendering, we chose to go with Octane as a render engine. Sorry, Cycles, um, but the motion blur is just better. It is. Um, and I would like to take a moment here, actually, just to give a quick shout out and a thank you uh, to two people, uh, to Lino Barta, Lino, pa my, can't say the name, <laughs> uh, Lino Grande and Bartek Pexa, who work tirelessly on continuing to improve and develop Octane for Blender. So thank you guys, you are incredible. Please do keep up the amazing work. The biggest reason that we chose Octane is its fantastic scattering system. Uh, which allows us to scatter hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of instances for things like trees and grass, rocks, flowers, etc., um, all incredibly efficiently at render time instead of in the viewport. One of the benefits um, of using Octane is also opened up to the render network, um, which I believe they've got a booth up in the uh, the the attic upstairs, and there's a talk, I believe, on Friday specifically about the render network. Um, but that's a, it's a powerful cloud-based render solution that's cut some of our render times on a full one-minute 12K plate from days down to hours. Um, they also do now, I believe, support cycles. Um, so if you are interested in cloud-based rendering, you should definitely check them out. Ultimately, Simplates is still a really new business. Um, as we approach the end of our first full year of operation, I am incredibly proud, not only of the work that we've already produced and the clients that we've, uh, that we've already worked with, but that we get to be a part of, as Tom touched on in um, his keynote, one of the best communities of CG artists in the world and using this incredible piece of software in Blender. Um, I'll just leave the rest of our, our demo reel to, to play here for a second. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to learn more about us, um, please do connect and please feel free to come and ask me any questions either directly after this or in the bar later on. I would love to, to have a chat with you about it. So yeah, uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the Blender Conference.